Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refine. I'm Gard Swanson. You know, when it comes to food, Seattle is definitely an international city with flavors from every corner of the globe, from Hong Kong to Mumbai to Moscow. Refine's Malia Karlinsky visited a local Russian restaurant getting national attention for its delicious taste of Eastern Europe. Poroshki on third is a taste of Russia right here in Seattle. Real life babushkas, that's Russian for grandmas, are busy baking while Matroska dolls decorate the space and patrons enjoy classics like borscht, chicken Kiev, and of course, Poroshki's. Hot and delicious. I mean, it's really good. But if you're thinking this restaurant is old school, I mean old country, the answer is yet. Meet Alyssa Anderson. I think you and I have something in common because my last name's Karlinsky and it's Russian and I'm 100% not Russian at all. <laughs> and you owe Poroshki on third and are you Russian? Absolutely. <laughs> What's your yeah. background? Um, I'm Filipino, just pure Filipino. I moved here six years ago and now I'm here in Seattle working in a Russian place. She bought the eatery in 2016. So how did you learn how to bake? Um, my sister taught me when I was seven years old. I just love eating. <laughs> what do you love about baking? I don't know, it just brings out the creativity in me. Always innovating, she created Pinoyskis, a true multicultural mashup. So how are they different from the Poroshkis? Um, they have um, Filipino fillings in them. Mm. Mostly for Poroshkis, they have dry fillings like the potatoes, cabbage, beef and they pretty much just um, stay in that kind of side. And like with the Filipino Peruchis, they're more on the saucy side. And they've been popular? They've been really popular. <laughs> they keep running out of them. <laughs> but there are plenty of Peruchki flavors too, like smoked salmon and beef and cheese. How many kinds of Peruchkis do you make here? About 25 right now. And six vegan varieties. It's not just about bread and filling here. Alyssa is also an amazing pastry chef. What are we going to make? I'm making my pumpkin spice latte mm. um, tart. So I have here um, a coffee walnut um, tart right here, right now. And right here is a pumpkin panna cotta. So I'm just going to glaze that right now. Okay, so you put you put your pumpkins on there. Mm -hmm. What happens next? So then I pipe um, my coffee cream here. You want to try? I would love to try one if you trust me. Of if course. it's a bad one, I'll eat it. That's beautiful. And then I'm just gonna add um, a chocolate stem to it. How cute is that? What's your favorite thing to get here? My favorite thing is the spinach, egg, and cheese pierogi. Can you describe what it tastes like? Heaven. I'm here in downtown Seattle, Washington, and I'm looking for a Poroshki place. It's right there. It's called Poroshki on 3rd. Locals love her food, but these days, Poroshki on 3rd has a national presence, thanks to a certain food network phenom. Mm. Mm. Well, you recently appeared on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, right, with Guy Fieri? Yeah. So how was that? He was fantastic. He was really nice. He made it really easy for me. At internationally inspired Poroshki on 3rd, Everyone can speak the language of good grub. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refine. Do you have a favorite foodie find you want us to check out? Email us at hello at seattlerefine.com and tell us all about it. From mouthwatering deliciousness wrapped in dough to ice cream wrapped in cold, one of China's coolest chains says it's coming to Seattle. The chain Nobibi announced on its website that it plans to open a location in the Emerald City, though it doesn't say where or when. The trendy shop is known worldwide for its ice cream wrapped in 24 karat edible gold foil and other outrageous treats like cotton candy wrapped ice cream. The chain also plans to expand to Portland in the near future. Ginger beer might be my favorite thirst quenching beverage of the moment. And now thanks to Refine.com contributor Rockney Roll, I have a better appreciation for how they make the stuff. Rockney went behind the scenes at Timber City Ginger Beer in South Seattle for an eye-opening lesson what makes this spicy concoction so good. To learn more, check out the website. If ginger beer doesn't wet your whistle, a nice glass of wine might do the trick. And now one of Hollywood's most recognizable faces is making a name for himself in the vineyard. Yakima's Kyle McLaughlin earned himself a place among the celebrity elite with his star-making roles in films like Blue Velvet and on television in Twin Peaks, Sex and the City, and Desperate Housewives. But there's another side to this humble star. We find John Prentice caught up with him far from the lights of Tinseltown in Walla Walla. 
Walla Walla, Washington is famous for onions, apples, and... What are you planning on doing this weekend? Drinking a lot of wine. We're here for Walla Walla to go wine tasting. What's your opinion of Kyle McLaughlin? I... I am excited. I love Kyle McLaughlin. Actor Kyle McLaughlin may be famous around the world for his roles on TV and the silver screen, but around here he's known for something else. Kyle is a winemaker. Why do you love wine so much? Wine is just about people. It's about people coming together. For example, today, you and I would never have met, and now we're sharing a glass of wine. This is fun. Doing an interview. It's about sharing. You know, it's about conversation. It's about a story. And Kyle's story started here in eastern Washington. Growing up in Yakima, um, I mean, I certainly was, I participated in the plays and in the musical that was happening at my high school. And when I went to college at the University of Washington, I also was involved a little bit in the theater community there, but, but it wasn't really my focus. What would you consider your big break? The, the big break, I guess, would be being cast in Dune, which was in 1983, and also directed by David Lynch. That's, that's where our relationship began, the creative relationship and the friendship. A surprising number of people also come up to me for some of my early work in Blue Velvet, and then there's fans that follow uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or How I Met Your Mother, so a little bit of everything, but I think first and foremost it would be Twin Peaks, <coughs> certainly with the, the reboot. This is, excuse me. A damn fine cup of coffee. People, you know, get a big kick out of it. Sam, check with Donna, see if she's got that guitar in her office. And who could forget Kyle as the mayor of Portland? Portlandia was uh, a, like a dream come true because uh, not only did it bring me back to the Northwest and to Portland, a city I also love, and the director, John Kreisel. And they are um, all just brilliant performers and the nicest people you could possibly imagine. Kyle says he loves acting, but he's loved wine for even longer. And becoming a winemaker was just the next logical step in his relationship with the stuff. And that started it in 2005. Smells all right. The first wine, the Cabernet, I called it a Pursued by Bear. And people always have a question about that. Oh, were you chased by a bear, they asked me. I said, in fact, no, although I've been in close proximity of bears uh, in Yosemite. That's another story for another day. But it was really, um, it's a stage direction from The Winter's Tale, uh, one of Shakespeare's plays. And the entire stage direction is Exit, Pursued by a Bear. And the actor is, as it said, is chased off stage by a bear, and he meets a, sort of an untimely end. But it felt kind of appropriate to me um, that there was an actor represented, and he was actually being pursued by something. And I've always felt that the bear sort of represented the wine. And Kyle says this pursuit has led him to an unexpected place, home in eastern Washington. And what's happened with the wine journey is that I've suddenly returned to a place and I see it with a completely, with completely different eyes. Not only do I reconnect with the people here, and I've made a, an entirely new community of friends here within the Walla Walla wine world, all just fantastic people. So not only are you an actor. Yes. You're a winemaker. Yes. And you're also a dad, right? Yes, I am. How, how gratifying is that? I'm going to be a dad soon. So are you really? Advice. Well, yeah, congratulations. Tell, tell, me, tell me what you know. Wow, it's one of the, it is the greatest journey of life. It will open your heart to things that you didn't even realize that you could feel. And I felt, that in my case, the bond with my wife, which was already strong and wonderful, um, just added another dimension. Kyle says life is beautiful, Washington is beautiful, and Washington wine is beautiful. But how does it taste? Time to find out. Well, mm. I have to say, that's a damn fine glass of wine. I was expecting you to say that. <laughs> we'll finish this bottle and get on to the next one. <laughs> John Prentice, Seattle, Refine. McLaughlin hasn't given up his day job. His new movie, The House with a Clock in Its Walls, opens in theaters this Friday. Refine is just getting started. We sit down with the star of the movie that's breaking barriers and making serious bank at the box office. I mean, that's a huge expectation. Crazy Rich Asian star Harry Golding. But first, we've got your sneak peek at the most fashion-forward week of the year. What we wanted to do for our customer is show them what's going on for fall and what's actually available here. Channel Refine will be right back. 
But first, Seattle Refine is standing strong with our friends and colleagues in the Carolinas as they recover from Hurricane Florence. Join us as we support our relief effort by donating to the Salvation Army. To learn how you can help, log on to SeattleRefine.com and click on Sinclair Cares Carolina Relief Fund or text Florence to 91999. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Refine. I'm Guard Swanson. Every once in a while, I like to think of myself as kind of a stylish guy. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about the biggest Northwest fashion event of the year just got underway today. We're talking about our sponsor, Fashion Week at the Bellevue Collection, and this year promises to be better than ever. Forget New York or Milan, fashion is about to take center stage in the Northwest. Bellevue Fashion Week at Bellevue Collection is one of the hottest tickets in town every September. We've been doing Bellevue Fashion Week for 13 years now, and really what we wanted to do for our customer is show them what's going on for fall and what's actually available here. Most shopping centers don't do this kind of thing. It's not just one event. So we wanted to kind of create a whole gamut of opportunities for people, as well as complimentary events in Bellevue Square that people could just sort of dip their toe in and get a taste of fashion, especially if they find it a little intimidating. The week kicks off with the highly anticipated Independent Designer Runway Show, where up and coming designers compete and flex their creative muscles on the catwalk. So we started doing this with mentors that were in the fashion business to really help them take their ideas to the next level so they could show on this very high production level that we do for Fashion Week. But this year, IDRS is doing something different. So we thought this is an opportunity to invite only, bring back some of those people who have either won before or we really thought they'd had great showing and bring them back and give them another opportunity. Our IDRS winner for 2017 is Rebecca Adams. So we have our winner from last year, Rebecca's coming back. Uh, we have some that were in two years ago. We want to see, okay, what have they done since then? How has their line developed? Also invited, Deontay Weather from season 16 of Project Runway. Make it work, Deontay. But if you're looking for more of a night out with the girls, the posh party trend show is where it's at. It's really a combination of beauty and trends. So when you get there, you get a chance to meet with some of our beauty stores that give you little five minute quickie fixes or tips and tricks and that kind of a thing. But the real showstopper, the collective runway show. What we do with this show is we take our more fashion forward stores and give them their own scenes. So you really get a sense of what they're about. And especially if it's a brand you're not as familiar with, it's a great introduction. So we have Vince this year is added onto the show as well as Dan Van Frist or DVF is how they go by now. And we also have um, Ted Baker's gonna be in the show. So I'm excited about this one. You see some really fun fashions coming down, but you can get them in the store that day. The Collective Runway Show isn't just about fashion, it's about fundraising too. The great thing about the Collective Show is that we have this really fun partner that we're working with as our nonprofit, and they were our partner last year. And it's Special Olympics Washington. Bottom line, Bellevue Fashion Week is more than just glitz and glamour. It's the ultimate fashion experience that you can't get anywhere else. You just aren't seeing that anywhere else in this market, anywhere in the Northwest. To learn more about Fashion Week at the Bellevue Collection, log on to our website. Coming up, people are going crazy over the movie Crazy Rich Asians. We go one-on-one -on -one with the director and star. And we'll introduce you to a young girl who's making her sweet dreams come true. Back to the show, I'm Guard Swanson. Well, mark your calendar. One week from tonight, one of the most buzzed about new dramas of the fall makes its debut here on Como 4. A Million Little Things tells the story of a close-knit group of friends who have their lives turned upside down when one of them commits suicide. The show is filmed in Vancouver, BC. I got invited to the set to meet the stars. Look for my exclusive report next week right here on Refine. From the small screen to the silver one, one of the summer's most insanely popular hits at the box office was the rom-com Crazy Rich Asians. But before it even hit theaters, refined managing editor Britt Thorson got a chance to speak to the star and director about why the film would be a hit. So most people, when they're making like a romantic drama, don't have the weight of what everyone is talking about with this movie, which is that it's 
you know, the first all Asian cast out of Hollywood in 25 years. A long time. In a long time. Tell me what that means for you guys. For me, just growing up, um, not seeing, um, especially the Asian American sort of experience on the big screen um, was something that, uh, especially as I got older, was really realizing. And I was in the business, so I was like, I could do something about this. Was the fact that there was a book already existed with a huge following, it was so popular, I feel like that might be a little bit of a double-edged sword because you know there's gonna be people out there who are interested in the story and love the characters, yeah. but you also know, like, can't let him down. No, absolutely. I mean, there's a huge expectation. Kevin Kwan has created such an amazing trilogy. Uh, but we, what we found with all these early screenings is that everybody who's read the books, who's a massive fan, has absolutely thoroughly enjoyed the fact that all of these characters are being brought to light and, and being brought to light in a very authentic way. Because I was reading a little bit about this, how you guys ended up coming together, like a colleague had seen him and you Instagram stalked. And tell, tell me about what happened. And you turned it down a couple Times. I did. So initially, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of take it over. But the, the news had gone around. Like Singapore was abuzz with the fact that Warner Brothers had bought the rights. John had uh, was directing, um, and the book was huge. Um, but at the time, I was a presenter. I was, I was doing things much like yourself. Um, and so I was in that frame of mind of like, oh no, 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 it's definitely not for me. I'm not an actor. It's exactly. <laughs> But it wasn't until John reached out and uh, and sort of we had this hour-long conversation on Skype, and he convinced me that like we, we've seen your stuff. This character is so true to who you are as a person. Um, will you read for me? Like. The, take the first step, and I trusted him. This book is book one in three books. Absolutely. So is this movie one in three movies? I really hope so. I would love to do it. I know we want to get into more of the stories and tell more of those things, and we have a great cast to get into it with. Uh, it depends on the audience. If they come out um, and demand it, that's then we will, and I think we're all willing to jump. Actor Henry Golding is having quite a summer. He's also starring in the new Blake Lively Anna Kendrick film, A Simple Favor. And in case you were wondering, Warner Brothers has already greenlit a sequel to Crazy Rich Asians, but there's no release date yet. We'll keep you posted. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Refine, I'm Guard Swanson. A young West Coast girl who refused to be defeated by life's obstacles has emerged from the darkness with a skill and a dream. Reporter Dan Ruscone has her inspirational story. While most kids are playing outside in this Lehigh neighborhood, Addie Branham is going to her happy place in the basement where she's designed her own little getaway. A taste of Paris, very fitting for this shy and humble 12 year old who is all about pastries. This is a full fledged cake making business called Miss Addie's Cakes. On any given day, Addie can spend five or six hours down here fulfilling a variety of orders from beautifully decorated wedding cakes to creative and colorful party or birthday cakes. Getting this talent at such a young age came at one of the most Very hard. challenging times of her life. In the fall of 2013, Addie's father Matthew was deployed to Afghanistan. Addie was really scared. I always worry about stuff, so I was worried that like it wouldn't be safe. Her biggest fear? that I didn't know like if he would come back. As part of the deployment, the kids got a $500 grant from the military to keep them busy. Addie used the money to take cake baking classes. It got my mind off of it, so I would forget. Then just several months later, in February of 2014, Abby's mom was diagnosed with breast cancer while her dad was still in Afghanistan. She came home and told us that she has cancer. I started crying. I don't know if she'd be okay. Addie felt all alone. So Addie did the one thing that brought her peace and happiness, making cakes. And soon her skills took off and her popularity grew. So I started um, like just a few cakes for like family and then they told other people. The orders are now coming in, all because of a young gal who took her own advice. Don't give up and dream big. Just because you're young doesn't mean you can't do stuff. Addie's next dream? She wants to go to culinary school in Paris. All right, that's it for today's show. I'm Guard Swanson. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you right back here on Seattle Refined.